Hello again, welcome back. <laughs> Counter Strike, the game we all love and admire, the game we have grown up with, the game that forms crucial members of society, Stop! the game that holds entire countries' market share. The only little problem it's facing right now, or since it's been out, is uh these creatures. Helicopter, hel and my friends had enough. They want me to create a cheat forum, but the little they did know, I had other plans. <clears throat> so, let us begin. The ticking sound you're hearing right now is one of the penalties they have implemented, the grasshopper punishment. It forces the cheater's Glock to continuously alternate between single and burst fire modes, which makes the Glock a totally unusable weapon during the match. Yeah. It makes it feel as if you are in your grandma's garden. <laughs> Since this goofy and very funny manipulation was done by overwriting the game's memory, sneaking an attack was nearly impossible. Hmm. What you have just witnessed is just another punishment. I called it Fragile Trigger. Every time the cheater aims at one of their teammates, the trigger holds. <laughs> and pulls hard. It is literally an inverse trigger bot, and it doesn't take that much of brain cells to edit a dead simple code that is available for free for everyone on GitHub and making it public wouldn't be a good idea to get a cheat behavior that would give you an actual advantage. But, you know, the damage had already been done. Speaking of the dead simple code, every punishment you have and will see in this video consists of a couple lines of code, because all of the messiness is hidden within this small tiny SDK that definitely did not take me forever to write. And debug. While the cheater is shooting, there is a good chance of him dropping his gear away. And that can also happen while planting the bomb or even while being in the buy menu. Every throw ball is completely useless, because instead of throwing it normally, the player just drops it. No more Nate King tips. This rule applies for every throwable except the Molotov and the good guy's Molotov. And that's because it has its own sort of penalty called Flame Grant Me Strength. But, unfortunately, this punishment wasn't really effective, as the close throw takes forever to pull off and eventually the cheater just avoids it. Okay, just, just give me a second. Why? My initial idea was to force the player to look down and freeze him by blocking the system input and burn him to death. I tried what this stock influencer had suggested, but it did not work. Uh... Huh? What the f... What? Heavy knife is another dead simple punishment and I really mean that. 
is just four lines of code. Running with the knife all around is not a thing anymore. This keeps the cheater from rushing and winning time. Or escaping potential deaths. If I were to ask most of you about your addictions, aside from watching anime girls, many of you would probably say shoot and switch back to the knife move. That later habit inspired me to turn into a punishment, which I called cursed snipers. Whenever someone tries to scope with the EVP or the scout, they get switched back to their kitchen knife. So, it's either called Zilla mode on everyone, or just don't bother buying these two weapons at all. The last two penalties I have are the bunny man, which basically forces the player to keep jumping for a short period of time. Huh? And the Zaza. I call it that way because it completely breaks the game and makes it totally unplayable. Sadly, I did not include it in the final build, because for whatever reason, it wasn't that stable. It sometimes worked as intended, sometimes it did not. Even the bunny man that is supposed to occur every two to three rounds happened only once. Yep, only once. Sir, can we ask a question? Sir, a question. question. What do we start with? Sir, how do we start with trust? Okay, let's let's do this once and for all, okay? What about books? Oh, a bit more what about lectures? Do oh, yeah, a bit more mm, okay, what about brilliant? Hmm. You don't know what that is, right? If you want to learn computer science and almost every field tied to it, you should consider start using Brilliant. It is you are going to learn by doing, not just watching. And that's what I call effective learning. They have thousands of interactive lessons in math, data analysis, programming, and AI. Check out their programming courses that I think are a great way to build foundations for your journey in computer science and help you learn the real world of tech. They will take you from the bare bones like conditionals and loops and gradually to thinking in code. So, if you are aiming to start or buff yourself up by expanding your knowledge and improving your problem-solving skills, there is no better place than Brilliant. To try what Brilliant has to offer for free for 30 days with 20% off your annual subscription, click on the link down in the description. <clears throat> Back to our subject. You might be wondering how I convinced the mythology to hack. Well, good question. My first victim was my friend Isaac, who never experienced what it's like to cheat. I sent him the first version and he downloaded it. He only played 3 rounds to realize all the craziness he had experienced was from Gaben.exe. He kills it. I had to find a way to hide it. And sure enough, I did. And here is how. I created another binary that plays the role of the deployment module that had Gaben.exe embedded into it. I made sure when the victim runs the deployer, it installs and runs Gaben.exe and their camouflaged name, icon and file description. I added a temporary cheat just to make them convinced it's a legit hack. I hoped in a call with them, start streaming and showcasing the features and try my best to convince them even more. And they fell into my evilness. They couldn't find it and delete it. I restart didn't help either because the deployer adds the bait software to the startup apps. Until I obviously had enough and show them how. The other reason I wanted to troll people whom I know, beside me being completely broke that I couldn't pay Google to spread my memoir, is I really couldn't think of any other way to get my victims POVs. Counter-Strike has a command to record the current ongoing match, and with it I could have tried to make my software record and send the demo file over. But the good classic way of executing the source engine commands externally is not a thing anymore. Yes, you can reverse engineer the game and find exactly the command executor function's pointer, figure out where its parameters are, set up the stack, and call it a day. Except, I am not that much of a reverser. The only way that came across my mind is to get the cheater's Steam ID, pray his profile is public, and any of these stat tracking websites can give me his recent matches demos. But, the marketing problem was still on the horizon. So, was all that time I was missing just writing these few lines of code? The answer is no, not really. It also wasn't because my project completely broke mid-development nor the random errors I was getting. Surely not because the slow process of testing it, not because Windows was doing Windows stuff to me, not because my internet was so bad that I couldn't even push to the repo, not because Valve was flooding me with their daily updates, not because I had beaten Dark Souls 3 4 times while my life was going down the pit of hell, not because my... 
was absolutely shit in itself that one time it had to restart since the CPU couldn't handle compiling one of the tools I was using. The reason... The reason was... I had... I had to write a Python script. Now after wasting all that time just to get those few clips of my friends getting erected with my little craft, I just... I just wanna drink olive oil until I black out. <coughs> oh my god!